And you need to ask yourself, am I ready for the great awakening? Am I ready for the great revival that we pray for? If I'm in survival mode, then we must get ready for the great war. Welcome to The Gathering Place. This is Dr. Nugent Big Ponds. Good to be with you again. Uh, we have a, a new teaching today about the preparation for your destiny. And, uh, you know, the Lord has told me this year, 2021, to begin to uh, occupy, get ready to occupy the land. And to do that, you have to re redeem the land. Because we have, I'm sure maybe you have, I know I have, I've prayed over the lands in different places and over this nation I surely have, and um, other countries. But because of all the things that are happening that are not God, the defilement is being placed on the land again. Innocent bloodshed, idolatry, immorality, all that stuff. Broken covenants, broken promises, rather. So we're going to have to redeem, re-redeem the land and occupy the promised land, basically what that means. And so I want to go over that with you today based out of 1 Corinthians 2, 7, 9 where it says, For we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which one of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Talk about Jesus. For it is written, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Now, before we go any further, I want to make mention also that in June the 7th to the 11th, we we're having our SWAT training here at Two Rivers Namor Training Center. Uh, we've been here for, gosh, over 20 years. And uh, we've had thousands of people that have come to our training center. And what we teach is spiritual warfare and but this particular session is going to be nothing but land, how to redeem the land, the promised land. And uh, uh, God, is, I think God is showing us things that will help us in the future. There is, in the Might to Fight book, let me read this to you. <clears throat> There's a, what they call the door opening warrior in the Might to Fight book. Here, you need to get one of these. The Might to Fight book says, you know, warriors open doors. The seven doors of a warrior, the seven battlefields of today are the seven battles of today. Number one, opens the door of joy. That's being tested. Open the doors of peace. That's being tested. Open the doors of prosperity. That's certainly been tested. Open the doors of unity. Amen. That's being tested. Five, open the doors of vision. No vision. Don't see the future. That's what they're trying to instill in us. Those that are unbelievers. Six, open the doors of healing. And a whole lot of people need healing. Mind, body, and spirit. And open the doors, number seven, of love. Because love overcomes all things. And that's what's going to keep us abroad. That's what's going to keep us our heads out of the water, you might say, is that love overcomes all things. You can People can do a lot of things to you. They can try to destroy your vision, make you sick, uh, destroy your unity and prosperity, no jobs, no peace, and no joy because you're unhappy with what you have to do and how you're living. <clears throat> but one thing they cannot destroy, and that's God's love. Love for God, love for God loving you. Now Luke 9, 10 says, And the apostles, when they had returned, told him all that they had done. Then he took them and went aside privately to a deserted place belonging to the city called Bethsaida, a house of pity and mercy is what that means. But when the, uh, verse 11, but when the multitudes knew it, they followed him, and he received them and spoke to them and the kingdom of God and healed those who had needed healing. So 
We are door opening warriors. Uh, God's plan is not our plan. God's plan is to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity or suffering, but to give you a future and a hope. That's God's plan. That is God's plan. Habakkuk 2, 3, wait for God's go for you. Why? For the certainty. For the certainty. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hastens toward the gold, and it will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it. For it will certainly come. It will not delay. Your breakthrough. Hasten toward the gold, and it will not fail. Through, all, through its tarries, wait for it. For it will certainly come. It will not delay your breakthrough. God accomplishments is in you, not in this world. Psalms 138.8 says, The Lord will accomplish what concerns me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, is everlasting. Do not forsake the works of your hands. I will accomplish what God sends his desire. So will my word be which goes forth from your mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter which I send it. So get ready for your breakthrough. 20 21, there's going to be great breakthroughs regardless what you see on the news media or whatever. Whatever you hear or see, don't pay any attention to it because God is God and God will never change and no one's going to ever destroy God. He will accomplish what he, he desires to do. It's just plain and simple. We have to be Christ-like, His ways and decrees, His deeds. Romans 8.29 uh, talks about uh, predestined to become conformed to the image of His Son, Yeshua, Jesus. Jeremiah 17.10 says, uh, I, the Lord, search, search the heart and test the mind according to His ways, according to the results of His deeds. Our destiny beforehand, we walk, we will walk in God, in other words. Ephesians says, workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Acts 17, 26 says, determine their appointed times and their boundaries of their habitations. Committed to be wise by listening. Proverbs 16.3 basically says, commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. Very simple. Just as simple as pie. Commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. Very simple. Proverbs 19.20 says, listen to counsel and accept discipline that you may be wise and rest be be wise the rest of your days. So God accomplishes, accomplishment is a pleasure to God and should be a pleasure to us because he knows the end because he was there in the beginning. Isaiah tells us in 46 that the end from the beginning, my purpose will be established and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Thus says the Lord. So these are just bullet scriptures that you need to get a hold of. Teach us to number our days through Christ. Now, the number of days basically means life is short. So live wisely. Meditate on God and on living as the people of God. God is not a 
listening for us from for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Teach us to number our days. Psalms 9 and 12. Teach us to number our days. Because God's wrath is will come. I mean, we just we're not going to get around that. But it's going to come for the for the sinner, those unbelievers. And so that's where we need to get our loved ones saved and we need to get our family saved, people that don't know God. Uh, because the beast and the false prophets are uh, they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelation 23 says that they will be thrown into the abyss, which is the bottomless pit, and shut in, or shut it, and sealed it over him, so that they would not deceive a nation anymore, or any longer. So Satan is doing evil through man, and he wants to take you down to the bottomless pit with him. He knows he's going. He knows what's going to happen. He's not... It, that stupid. So we have to stand strong and be delivered. Acts 27, 24, you must stand before Caesar or the government, in this case, and behold. Psalms 31, 15, deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who try to persecute me. So that's a prayer and he will deliver you. So don't worry about it. Destiny, God's divine intersection. Time and situation, very important. Where your gifts and skills and passion, experience and personality merge together. You rush ahead to the intersection and, and we're going to talk about this divine intersection because that's very important. Uh, God's will often takes you from where you are to where he wants you to be. And that's his divine intersection. Time and situation is very important. Where your gifts and skills, passion, experience, personality merge together. Either revealing or carrying out your destiny. But the main thing in this divine intersection is a place where your gifts and skills and your passion, experience and personality, they all merge together. They come together as one. So do not rush to God's intersection. Don't rush ahead to the intersection, not realizing the importance of God's perfect timing. It's not your timing, but God's timing. Until your divine intersection comes, God is preparing you for that moment. His people, your task and purpose is ahead. Preparing your destiny, the people and places involved that are with you. The people and the places are involved that are with you. This divine intersection, God is preparing you for that moment. Preparing your destiny. And those people that want to be with you and, and places involved that are with you. They're, they'll be with you. They'll stand with you and be strong. In other words, you've got to go to the divine intersection first. Because that's where your, your gifts, your skills, and passion, experience, and personality merge together. Now, so you don't want to rush to that intersection uh, because God's preparing it for you. Um, it's, it's a place where you get leave the ordinary to the extraordinary place. God's locating God surrounded by ordinary things. But now he's going to have you doing ordinary things and it's going to launch you into your extraordinary things because you need to watch the intersection because you're getting ready to move into it to the extraordinary things 
fulfill the duties of routine responsibilities. Routine responsibilities to God. See, when it's <clears throat> routine, it can be routine to man, but not to God. When you start doing things for God, it releases you and launches you into the, out of the ordinary to the extraordinary. And it takes you from that intersection to God's divine intersection. It's no longer just routine. Let's talk about, a little bit more about the, the divine intersection where your gifts and skills and passion, experience and personality all merge together. Uh, you may be doing ordinary things right now in ministry. Why? Because what it does, it sharpens up your gifts, it, sh it develops your skills, it develops your passion it, uh, to acquire more experience, to create a better personality within you. Get ready for your extraordinary, what I'm saying. Because there's extraordinary things coming your way. Now, some things in life are, are already ready. Now, the Canaan nights, when, when the Israelites entered the Promised Land, God had already provided the Israelites because the Canaanites had already dug wells, cultivated the land, and built the communities in the land. So all that was done. And in Philippians 4.15, it says, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of, all the, of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. So give, so it shall be given. Philippians 4.14 talks about being acceptable, sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. If we give, give of ourselves, finances, whatever the case may be. But we have that opportunity to give, certainly. And so, uh, coming to a close here, that supernatural place always adds God's, God to your routine. The nature, the natural becomes the supernatural, very important. Discover that God can even use the weakness, the faults of your life for His purpose. In other words, God merges all things together for the good when you love Him and walk in His destiny, which is for you. So these are key scriptures here that will help you along. In John 14, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me or through me. His way, His plan. I've said this before. Let me say it again. Don't be praying that God will bless your plan. You pray, pray that God will give you a plan. You don't go out and create your own plan and then expect God to put His blessing on it when you went out and done it yourself. you done it yourself and you wonder why things didn't work out right. Because you did it yourself. You didn't wait on God to perfect His perfect plan in you. In John 10.10 10, it says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the fool. God has a plan for you. He wants you to have the abundant life. He gives us all free choice. Choose wisely. You're testing God. Now Daniel talks about, we heard of the story before about the Hebrew children that went in the fiery furnace and God acts on their behalf. Now the test here is uh, is compared themselves to the king's way of eating or doing. In other words, you act on God's acts on their behalf. Because it's ten times better than any man or king in Daniel. In other words, they were... It wasn't all about them going into the fire, not 
burning up and all this, as it was that they, they chose Nebuchadnezzar's God or their God. And what they did, they chose their God, the God. The Hebrews chose their God, which was God, together to have it complete confidence and choose their God and face the persecution. We do serve or worship any other God. Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves and before you in this matter. We are thrown into the blazing furnace. The God we serve is able to save us from it and he will persecute us from your hand. O king, but even if, if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship your Im the image God you have set up. So it wasn't just about burning or keeping them from burning. They were doing that to let them know that I'm serving my God, not your God. And we need to let this world know that, that you have a God that's going to provide for you and keep you. Our pit is not God's action. In other words, choosing to have an ongoing relationship with God. That's key. That's key. He chooses to continue to have a relationship with God. Or they do. He acts alone, but he acts it with God. And his life only lifelong associating with his friends keeps him strong. Those who are for you and not against you. He is thrown in the pit with the lions and God acts on his behalf. He steps into the supernatural. And that's where we need to be, in the supernatural. When we do things, when we go to war, we go to battle, you're not out on the battlefield all by yourself. You're, you're stepping in the supernatural. The supernatural takes you there, follows you there, is with you there. The supernatural. So, the Hebrew children had to make a choice to serve God, and they did. They stick together. They don't separate. They're confident that God will work on their behalf. They have that confidence. In other words, you're going to have to have an outgoing relationship. In other words, you're going to step outside the four walls of the church, outside of yourself, outside of the world into his kingdom, and outside of the natural into the supernatural. Let me say that again. Your outgoing relationship is outside the four walls of the church, outside of yourself, outside this world into the kingdom, and outside the natural into the supernatural. That's where we belong, into the supernatural. So, you know, it's just something that you get, need to understand what's going on. But when you understand, take it outside the four walls. Don't keep it in the church. It's not going to do... If, if, you know, if your church is all saved, then that's wonderful. If they're not, then now you probably need to do something there. But if they're all saved, then you've got to take it outside the four walls of the church, outside of yourself, outside of this world, into his kingdom, outside of the natural, into the supernatural. That's where we need to be. I want to take you back just a little bit to get you to understand about God's intersection. That's where that divine intersection is a place. Uh, I want you to understand that you go to get your skills, better skills, better gifts, better passion, better experience, better personality, 
and it all merges together, carrying out God's destiny through you and with you. A divine intersection, as that's what you're headed for. You rush ahead to the intersection, not realizing the importance of God's perfect timing. In other words, don't be rushing. <clears throat> it always reminds me of people, you know, you'd be going down on the highway or the street, and a car comes zooming by you, you know, they're in a big hurry and just can't wait to get around you and pull in front of you and go down the road, and then there's a stop sign or stop light up there, and you, you barely slowly pull up to the stop sign, you look to your left, and there they sit looking at you. The same people that went around you 90 miles to 100 miles an hour just to get around you because they're such a big hurry. But when they get to that stoplight, they have to stop. And that's when you just pull right beside them. I want to wave at them and laugh at them, but I don't do that. I don't want to make them mad. I just, I just look at them and then turn away. Because they was trying to, they're such a big hurry, they had to get around me. I mean, I was the main problem in front of them. So they went zooming around me, and then when they get to the stoplight, there they sit. And those things happen. So, but I'm talking about a divine intersection where God prepares you for a moment. He has a task for you, He has a purpose ahead for you. Preparing your destiny. To you know, the people and places involved that are with you being prepared for their destiny. So, uh, we're going out of the ordinary things into the extraordinary things. So you need to watch at that royal intersection because you're getting ready to, when you go through the intersection, after you wait on God, you're getting ready to do extraordinary things. Fulfill the duties of your routine responsibility. It really is. It really is. That, that is something. That is something really unique. It really is. Now, remember, uh, just a little touch back here. Remember the divine intersection is a place you go to get experience on your gifts, your skills, your passion, your experience, and personality all merged together. So this is Dr. Nija Big Pond, Santa Tohi. God bless you. Until we meet again.